Welcome to this mini lecture on fatty acid synthesis. This image shows the relevant portions of the Pathways of Human Metabolism metabolic map for de novo fatty acid synthesis. Fatty acid synthesis occurs in humans primarily in liver, adipose, and lactating breast tissue, but also in many tumors. Remember that tumors have to create lots of membranes and need the phospholipids, which are built from fatty acids. So we'll be talking about uh, the various portions of this pathway, breaking them down into various sections on the uh, upcoming slides. The first step in synthesizing fatty acids is to get acetyl-CoA into the cytosol, so cytosolic acetyl-CoA. Remember, most of it is produced in the mitochondrial matrix. In order to get acetyl-CoA into the cytosol, in fact, citrate has to be transported out of the mitochondrial matrix, and then an enzyme called citrate lyase, or ATP citrate lyase, is activated to cleave the citrate into acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate. The next step of fatty acid synthesis is to produce a molecule called malonyl-CoA. Malonyl-CoA is simply acetyl-CoA with another carbon group added from bicarbonate. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase is the enzyme that catalyzes this step, and it requires the vitamin B7 cofactor, or biotin, to do this carboxylation reaction. Recall that malonyl-CoA is the key inhibitor of fatty acid oxidation. We talked about this previously in Foundations of Medicine. Malonyl-CoA is an allosteric inhibitor of the carnitine palmitil transferase protein, preventing fatty acids from entering the mitochondrial matrix and preventing their oxidation. So I think this makes a lot of sense because if the cell is trying to synthesize fatty acids, it would just be wasteful to simultaneously be oxidizing them. So malonyl-CoA is a key intermediate in the synthesis of fatty acids, and it also inhibits fatty acid oxidation. The next step in fatty acid synthesis is actually a series of steps that are all catalyzed by the same enzyme, fatty acid synthase. So fatty acid synthase takes this malonyl-CoA, which is essentially an activated form of acetyl-CoA, and an acetyl-CoA, right, and puts them together. And in the process of putting them together, we lose the CO2 group. So we end up with a four-carbon unit, note that it's highly oxidized, attached to this thing called acyl carrier protein, which is part of fatty acid synthase. Now recall that, that uh, fatty acids are largely chemically reduced. There's not a lot of oxygens in fatty acids. It's why they have so many calories. So the next series of steps is largely to reduce the carbon uh, in, um, in the building fatty acid. And to do that, the reducing equivalents come from NADPH. So we have one step of reduction shown here. Then there's a dehydration reaction Okay, so we lose a water molecule, and then a second uh, dehydrogenase reaction, so a reduction reaction using, again, NADPH. And what we have now is a four-carbon molecule where the, the terminal three carbons are all fully reduced, uh, attached to ACP. So this is one round of fatty acid synthesis that gets uh, repeated multiple times. This image is just like the previous image, but it shows what round two of the fatty acid synthesis looks like, where now we have a new malonyl-CoA coming in, and here is our four-carbon intermediate we made in the previous round, and now we build a six-carbon molecule, where again we have an oxidized carbon that needs to get reduced using a dehydrogenase and NADPH. There's a dehydration step, another uh, dehydrogenase and NADPH, now we have a six carbon unit where all but the terminal carbon are fully reduced. And again, this continues again and again until we have 16 carbon long palmitate attached to the acyl carrier protein. That's cleaved off by the thiolase, and we end up with saturated fatty acids, C16 palmitate. 
And all of these steps are carried about out by one amazing enzyme called fatty acid synthase that has many different subunits. Uh, An image of that is shown on this picture showing all the different reactions catalyzed by this one enzyme. It functions as a homodimer and uh, it, the, the growing fatty acid is attached at this acyl carrier protein which essentially swings around the uh, substrate to all these different active sites. So the, these, this series of what five different reactions can occur. So let's summarize by looking at the process again on the Pathways of Human Metabolism map. We've zoomed in a little more and I've circled in red all of the steps that are catalyzed by fatty acid synthase. So starting again at step one where uh, citrate is first exported from the mitochondrial matrix. It's cleaved by citrate lyase to produce cytosolic acetyl-CoA. The acetyl-CoA, some of it, is first carboxylated to make malonyl-CoA. Then fatty acid synthase uses one acetyl-CoA and one malonyl-CoA, condenses them together, and then undergoes the cycles of um, reduction and dehydration to produce the reduced growing fatty acyl chain that's attached to the fatty acid synthase. And this process continues again and again uh, for seven more steps so that we end up with C16, uh, palmitate first attached to fatty acid synthase, synthase, but then it's hydrolyzed off to produce free palmitate, and then fatty acid elongation can occur, double bonds can be added, etc., to produce all of the fatty acids that the body needs. So to finish up, here's a chance for you to test yourself about which of the following are true about fatty acid synthesis. So the correct answer here is C, that it occurs in the cytoplasm. It requires citrate lyase. Remember, that's the enzyme that produces the cytosolic acetyl-CoA. But fatty acid synthase makes C16 palmitate, not C18 stearate. So that last column is false.